uh, you are most welcome to my channel. We are still continuing with double entry and I would like us to have an example to see how we can enter the different transactions with the double entry principle. Here is an example. We are looking at a certain business X and these are the transactions that took place in the month of June. Now, they are telling us that uh, he started business with cash worth 10,000 shillings. Now, this is a disclaimer. When you hear something that this person started business with this amount of money or this kind of assets, whatsoever thing we start the business with is capital. So everything that you start business with is capital. Even if it's a motor vehicle, that's capital. That means if that's the how we're supposed to treat it, then that means there are two accounts that we are going to have. One is cash and the other is capital. So our first account is going to be, we are going to have one is our cash account and we shall have our capital account. So, they are saying that start the business with cash, what? That means when we come to the cash, the cash account received capital worth 10,000. So that's the first entry. And this is our debit side. This is our credit side, the same here. So if we have debited here, remember we received cash in form of capital. Now, the capital account will be credited. That means we are giving cash, we are giving out capital in form of cash of how much? Of 10,000 shillings. That is how our first transaction is. So every transaction has a double entry principle there, or rule. So that means whatever you enter on the debit side must have a corresponding entry on the credit side. We are done with that. Now, the next transaction says on the 2nd of June, they opened up a bank account with 6,000 shillings. Now, one is the bank account and the other is the 6,000. Now, the 6,000 is the cash that we received here. So we open up, let's say, this is our bank account. So, we have two accounts here. One is the bank account and the other is the cash account. So, we are going to lose 6,000 from our cash to open up a bank account. That means our cash is losing to the bank an amount worth 6,000. You see? Then, our bank is going to receive cash worth 6,000. Thousand. What is the meaning here? It means we are losing our cash worth 6,000 to the bank. The same principle applies here. The bank is receiving money, 6,000, from the cash. So that means we are opening up a bank account and this is the amount of money we are using. So that's how the double entry principle works. Then they are saying bought goods from Jonah on credit. Remember, we talked about personal accounts. Personal accounts, remember I say that these are accounts that record uh, debtors and creditors of the business. And these are persons. We record their names. We open up their accounts in names. So if we are, so they're saying that we bought goods from Jonah. That means these are purchases. So we have a purchases account and Jonah account as well. So we open up. Uh, a purchases account and Jonah account. See, so our purchases account is receiving from Jonah how much? Bought goods from Jonah on credit worth one thousand five hundred. Now, when you go to Jonah account. It will be purchases worth 1,500. That's how we apply the double entry principle. Now, 
we got the next they are saying bought goods by check now like i've told you every statement you read that's where you get that accounts that you're going to open up now here they're saying bought goods by check worth 1000 shillings now if it's by check that means we are affecting the bank so if bought goods by check that means when we buy goods we are increasing our purchases but then the money in the bank is what we use that means it will reduce therefore we are going to say we are purchases by bank worth 1000 and when you go to the bank account you credit the purchases worth 1000 what does this mean it means that we used money in the bank to purchase or to have purchases worth 1000 now to prove this that it's true you got the purchases account and see whether that the money was got from the bank is actually recorded so this is what makes the accounting equation to balance therefore we are looking at the next transaction they are saying that they sold goods for cash uh, 800, uh, 800 shillings so that means we have the cash account they're saying sold goods that one that sells the sales account and the other is the cash account that means we are going to open up a sales account so when it comes to the sales account they're saying they sold goods for cash 800 shillings that means we are receiving cash which is in the form of sales what 800 shillings that's the cash you are receiving but when you got the sales account actually we are crediting sales worth cash of 800 the same thing applies here it means when you come to the sales account we actually lost sales worth cash 800 shillings when you go to the cash account do you see the sales there that did we actually make get the the amount now, did you get the, the cash from the sales worth the same amount? Yes. So, as an accountant or an auditor, you tick up and say this transaction was correctly entered. Now, the next step says paid rent by check and shillings 500. Now, he paid rent. Like I told you, the statement you read is what gives you the two accounts that you're supposed to apply. So, we have the rent account, and if it's by check, that means our money in the bank is being affected. Therefore, you open up the rent account. So, they're saying we paid rent by check. If we pay rent, we are losing money we are giving out money and that means we are losing a certain amount of money now, i said when money is being taken out of the business we credit so if that's it so they're saying paid rent by check if it's by check that means the left side of our bank is going to be affected so we shall say rent of how much 500 therefore when we come to the rent account we are receiving from the bank worth 500 shillings so the next year they're saying return goods worth 300 to jonah remember jonah is one of our creditors so if they're saying that bought goods from jonah on credit this so that means in the Jonah account, we bought goods on credit, we purchased on credit. Now, here they are saying we return goods worth 300 to Jonah. These are returns outwards. That means we are returning to one of the, our suppliers. Therefore, this means we go to Jonah account and we say we are returning returns worth 300. That means we are going to open up a returns account. So a returns account, we have returned goods to Jonah worth 300 shillings. That, that means that when we come to Jonah, 
If we took goods on credit, what this? These were the things that we took. That's why you, that's why you put them on the credit side. But we are returning to him goods worth 300. That means if we are to pay our balance, we are not going to pay the 1,500. No. Why? Because we return goods worth of this. So, now, let's continue. So they're saying, the owner took shillings 100 for private use. Now, the owner comes to the business and takes money. Remember I told you about the business entity concept. The business entity concept, this is where the owner of the business is being separated from the business. That means the business and the owner, these are two separate entities. So the business also can be sued like it can also sue. That means it's, an, uh, it's a corporate person. It's an artificial person. Therefore, that means when it comes to the owner taking money from the business for private use, that becomes a drawing. So they are saying that the owner took shillings uh, from, from the business for private use. That means we shall go to our cash account then we shall put our drawings here and we put the amount that was removed sorry it was 100 then we open up the drawings account so the drawings account received cash worth 100 so this is how the double entry principle is being executed here so when the owner takes out money for personal use that means the drawings account is going to receive and the cash account will also be credited with this amount of drawings. So that means when someone says, okay, I took out money worth this. Now let us check in the cash account. This money, is it out? Yes, it's out in names of drawings. So you come to the drawings book and you check whether that money had a double entry principle. So with that, we check and see that still we put, uh, we put remember, on our accounting equation, assets equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. Remember, when it comes to drawings, drawings are always on this side. So that means we shall have our drawings worth 100 and we shall have our cash being an asset worth 100. So we shall have a balance in our accounting equation, which means we are still balancing our accounting equation. So we can actually check the performance of the business then our last says paid Jonah his account in full less 10% discount remember we have Jonah as a creditor he's a creditor to the business and if he's a creditor you know sometimes the creditors always give discounts for for, for them to motivate you to pay the loan or in case the credit to full so Jonah gave us a loan of 10%. So remember, this is the amount of money you're supposed to pay. So when you get that 10% uh, from the amount you're supposed to pay, remember it's 1,000. Actually, what we do is, remember, we had already returned this amount of good. That means we have 1,200 as our balance. So if 1,200 is our balance, we shall have a 10%. Now, the 10% is the discount Jonah is giving us, which means it's 120. This is the discount we are receiving. So if this, this is the discount we are receiving, the amount of money that we are going to pay is going to be 1,200 less of this. 1,200 less of 120, which is the discount giving us 1,080. So that means, in our, in our cash account, actually, we are going to have this. So we go to our cash account and say, we are paying to Jonah worth. So this is the amount of money we are paying to him. So if this is the amount of money that we are paying to him, uh, we come to Jonah's account. Jonah's account is going to receive cash worth 1080 now remember, if we are to do this, that means our account will not be balancing. We shall still have a debt of 120, yet it was a discount that we got. 
So that means we cannot close off Jonah's account. That means we create a discount received account. Therefore, we open up a discount received account. Now, in our discount received account, remember, here we are going to pay. So you come here and say, Jonah, and we put here our discount received. worth 120 and here we shall say Jonah worth 120 so when you add up the total here you realize you'll be getting 1500 and this side 1500 meaning we have actually balanced off and we have closed Jonah's, Jonah's account we have closed it off now we are done with posting to the various ledgers. This is how the DAO entry principle works. So each transaction, you always have to have a debit and a credit transaction. So you post to the debit and credit, basing on what they've given you in the statement. Now, the next part is how to close off these, these various accounts. How do we close off, for example? Now, to balance off this, for example, here, we shall have, being the value that we have only, then we have what they call balance carried down, and then balance brought down. So with this, actually, we balance of our accounts. The same applies here. Our total is... 2,500 and our balance carried down is 2,500 and our balance brought down is the same. So I'm going to look deeply into balancing off, especially when it comes to the trial balance. I'm going to do another number in this essence and then to lead us to the trial balance, the preparation of the trial balance. Therefore, we shall go deep into balancing off what does balance carry down mean, what does balance brought down mean. So for now, it is a good day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Kevin Davis Accounting, subscribe, like, and share.